Hi, I'm Minda Tracy from my online training hub. In this video we're going to look at how to insert a pivot table calculated item and a couple of uses for them. Our calculated items are the siblings of calculated fields and I used to have difficulty understanding when to use a calculated field versus a calculated item, but I found a way to get my head around them which I'll share with you here. If you want to download the workbook used in this video and get step-by-step -step written instructions, click here to go to my blog post. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here's my data. I've got my regions, my month, the type, whether it's renewal or initial, and the values. So this is just some sales data. I'm going to insert a quick pivot table. I'll put it on this worksheet so we can look at it in context of the data. So let's take a look by region and then type and the value, and we'll have the months going across the columns. So we can see our data split down by initial and renewal, and we've got a grand total here. But let's say I want to know what the renewal sales are as a percentage of the total. Well, I can do that using a calculated item. Now, the first thing I want to do is select a cell in the field where I want my calculated item added. It'll just save me a step later on. And then on the pivot table tools, I'm in 2013, so I'll go to the Analyze tab and then Fields, Items and Sets. But if you're in Excel 2010 or 2007, then you'll go Pivot Table Tools Options tab and you'll find Fields, Items and Sets. I want Calculated Item. So in here, I'm going to give my formula a name. Now, the key here is that I can work with any of the items within one field and I can select the different fields but notice how I was already in the type field so when I opened my insert calculated item it defaulted to type so you can always choose a different one if you weren't in the correct cell so I'm going to call this percentage renewal and the formula I'm going to use is an if Formula. Now you can use functions in here, but you can't use functions that require references to cells or array formulas. So this is an if formula. Now the first thing I want to do is check whether renewal is equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, then I'm going to get a div error. So I'm going to prevent that by using the if formula and if renewal equals zero, then enter a zero. Otherwise, Let's calculate what percentage renewal is of the total. So renewal, miss the divide by, divided by initial plus renewal. Close my brackets on that and then close it on if. And then click add. This will add it to my pivot table when I click OK. All right, so now I've got my calculated item. Now, the way I think about items, calculated items versus calculated fields is fields are the column headings that I have in my source data. So these are my fields, region, month, type, and value. Now, items are the items within each field. So in the type field, I have initial and renewal items. Now, by inserting a calculated item, I'm essentially adding an item to my source data, but on the fly, only within my pivot table. I'm using the data in my source data to add a calculated item, as we have here. Now, I have a couple of problems with this. First of all, I want to format the percentage renewals as percentages, but I don't want the rest of my data formatted in percentages. So I can't go in and change the field setting formatting because I'll end up with percentages everywhere as we can see, so that's not what I want. Instead, I just want to format percentage renewal items. So I could go along and select each one and then on the home tabs, choose percentage. But what I'm going to do is just switch the order of these quickly so that all of my percentages are together. And then I'm going to format them and then switch them back. And the great thing is they all retain their formatting because my pivot table options defaults to preserve cell formatting on update. Now, the other thing that we've got a problem with is if I add up these three values, I get 70, which we can see up here. 
but that's essentially double counting because this percentage renewal shouldn't be part of my total. So I'm going to turn off my subtotals and I'm going to get rid of my grand total. Okay, so now we have our pivot table with our calculated item for percentage renewal and I can move that around. I can change, take out month and I can move type up to the columns and my percentages formatting is retained. So I'll just turn off grand total on there as well because that's no good. And well, lastly, let's just move region 10 down to where it should be. If my mouse will cooperate, there we go. All right. So there you have calculated items. Let's look at another example. Here I've got some general ledger and PL data. So this is my general ledger transactions or balances by account. And here are the equivalent by the PL. So let's say I want to compare whether my PL balances are the same as my general ledger balances. Let's insert a pivot table. I'll put it on an existing worksheet on the same one. And then we'll look at by source in the columns, GL account and amount. Okay, so we've got our balances by GL and our balances by the PL. Let's remove the grand total. We want to identify any accounts that have a difference. So we can do that with the calculated item. Again, I'm going to select either of these cells in the column labels and then calculated item. So what I want to know is the difference between the DL and the PL. And I'll add that and click OK. So now I have a pivot table that is automatically reconciling my differences and I can see I have three. So there are a couple of examples of using calculated items in pivot tables. There are tons of other things you could use them for and the great thing about putting a calculated item in your pivot table as opposed to calculating it outside of the pivot table is that you can now work with this item as though it's part of your source data. So there you have pivot table calculated items and a couple of ways to use them. If you like this video, please take a moment to click the thumbs up and or leave a comment below. If you want to download the workbook, click here to go to the blog post where you'll find the download links and step-by-step -step written instructions. And be sure to sign up to our weekly Excel newsletter so you can learn more Excel tips and tricks to help you stand out from the crowd and make your job easier so you can go home early. Thanks for watching.